Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is V. In this video, I'll be talking about what it's really like working as a research assistant in academia. For those of you who are unsure, working in academia just means working in an institution or a university. Some of the topics that I'll be covering in this video include my job scope, so what I do on a daily basis as a research assistant, the work culture, and also salary. Just a little quick background about me, I'm currently working as a research assistant in Cambridge in genetics and stem cells, and my education background is in biomedical sciences, and for most of my lab experience, it has mostly been in academia. Before I start, I just wanted to say that all of what I will be saying is strictly based on my personal experience and being a research assistant will differ a lot depending on which research group you draw in your research project and also the institution. A research assistant, as the name suggests, is an assistant that helps out with research, whether it be biomedical research, bioinformatics, or anything like that. As a research assistant, you will be working under a supervisor, and this is usually a research associate or a co-PI, basically someone that has been working in their field of study for quite some time, and they're getting into the momentum of things to the point where they can't do all of their experiments alone, just why they need a research assistant. And it also means that they probably have enough funding to be able to pay your salary. So as a research assistant, your job is to help out with experiments or do data analysis or both. Usually your role does not include designing experiments or a lot of troubleshooting because your supervisor they will most likely have those ideas in mind already. With that being said though, you'll gain a lot more from your job if you actually read up about your research project and understand what you're doing and also why. It may be possible for you to suggest ideas for future experiments, but this might depend on your research group and also the scale of the project. If it's a huge project involving a number of people, they most probably already have a system set in stone, so your job is mostly to do the laborious work because they need as much help as possible. If your group is much smaller or if you're just working one-to-one -one with the supervisor, then you may have more opportunities to help sort of drive the project. There are of course pros and cons to each of these situations. For example, if you're in a larger group, most of the experiments will probably have already been optimized because they've been working on this for a while now. So this will give you the opportunity to very quickly pick up a range of techniques because it's not a lot of troubleshooting, but it's mostly just getting things done. And also in a larger group, you will most likely have to work with other colleagues as well, so this increases your exposure to a bunch of networks working opportunities and also to learn different techniques from these different colleagues. If you're working in a smaller team, however, or if you're just working one-to-one, -one, you might need to spend a bit more time optimizing many of the different experiments because it's sort of just the starting point of your research. But that also means that your supervisor most likely has more time to sort of teach you the different techniques and explain the project better to you, so you will generally have a more in-depth understanding of what you're doing. So regardless of what research group situation that you're in, you most likely have to do a bunch of experiments to do with molecular biology. And that's only if your research is entirely lab-based or partially lab-based. Although a lot of biomedical research is wet lab-based, there are also a lot of them that are dry lab-based, so it could be bioinformatics and mostly computer work. So in my current job, 99% of the work that I do is in the lab, and the only computer work that I kind of do is to compile results and send them to my supervisor. Sometimes I help um, analyze or align Sanger sequencing results, or just look at plasmid maps and try to come up with restriction digests. Other than that, I don't do a lot of statistical analysis. But of course, this will depend on the research group that you are part of. Maybe some research topics require a lot more stats, so then you'll need to help out with that. So this varies quite a lot. So what I'm saying is just based on my personal experience. Some of the common wet lab techniques that you'll be doing as a research assistant definitely will include tissue culture, which is basically maintaining and growing cell lines. It doesn't matter what kind of cell line, the general principle is relatively similar. A lot of research groups also work on genetic engineering, either using CRISPR, Gibson assembly, or even recombineering. Cloning is also another very common method, which is essentially to grow up plasmid DNA in bacteria like E. coli and then extract and purify these bacteria using mini prep or maxi prep depending on the amount of DNA you want. Other common lab techniques include PCRs, qPCRs, running agrose gels, western blots, and also ELISAs. Nowadays, other useful skills definitely include flow cytometry, fax, and cell sorting. So for me personally, on a day-to-day -day basis, we genetically engineer um, a plasmid, whether it's for combineering or Gibson assembly, and then I do a lot of cloning and then extract the plasmid DNA using mini prep or maxi prep, and then I would run a PCR using a range of different primers um, just to check if the plasmid has been assembled correctly, and then run that on an agarose gel. 
So I'm part of a slightly larger research project. So even though the techniques that I do are relatively common, in undergrad, I used to be used to say running 10 to 20 PCR samples, but now I need to increase the scale a lot and run several hundred, like six or 800 PCRs in one go. So that's just the major difference and learning curve for me. Sometimes my work can get repetitive. For example, I can just be running PCRs for one to two to three weeks straight, maybe be doing a bunch of maxi preps for a week straight to stock up on the DNA that we need for a transfection experiment. It can be quite repetitive but in a way it really helps me to hone in my skill on that specific technique. Working hours for research assistants and also researchers in academia in general are sort of a typical 9 to 5, but it is also quite flexible. For example, some of my colleagues choose to come in at 8am, but they will leave earlier. And some of my colleagues come in at 10.30am, but then they will leave later. But as a research assistant, you have a supervisor, and you're not just a postdoc who can follow their own schedule. The times that you come in and you leave might depend slightly on how your supervisor likes to do their experiments, but personally Personally, for me, I come in around 9.30 and leave around 5.30. Some days my working hours are shorter and some days they're longer. Usually it depends, but it doesn't really run that far. For some research groups, you might also need to come in during the weekend. For me, my research group works on stem cells, so the media needs to be changed every single day, hence why we need to come in during the weekend. But our group has set up a weekend TC rotor for this, so I only really need to come in one weekend every month. So it honestly isn't too bad because it doesn't actually take up too much time. Because I don't have too many other commitments, this is okay. But for some people, it might be something that you need to consider. In terms of the work culture in academia, I think this depends a lot on your colleagues and also your PI. Usually in academia, the research groups aren't that big, maybe under 20 people. So if you're lucky and you get along well with your colleagues, I think that it can be a really fulfilling work environment. But if the vibes are a bit off, you might need to deal with these people for at least a year, depending on your contract. In summary, I just say that the work culture in academic research depends a lot on your research group. I feel like the lighting is also changing quite a bit in my video and I'm sorry for that because the sun is setting. Um, but yeah, on to salary. As a general ballpark, a research assistant working in academia will generally earn around 25000 to 30000 a year, generally speaking. This of course depends on your work location, so if you were based in London, your salary would probably also be higher, but then again your living cost is also higher, so... Also, regardless of which position you're at, whether it's a research assistant, research technician, research associate, postdoc, PhD student, working in academia means that you'll always earn less compared to your industry counterpart. Your salary is pretty much fixed and there might be annual increments depending on how long you work at the research group, but if you're part of a university, your pension schemes might not be too great either and there aren't that many benefits compared to if you were working at, say, a biopharmaceutical or biotech company. I hope that I'm not putting anyone off because I still think that working as a research assistant, whether it's in academia or in industry, that will give you a lot of valuable experiences for your future career trajectories, whatever that may be. Any working experience is always valuable. But if you decide to stay in academia, for example, if you want to do a PhD and then stay as a postdoc and then a research associate, just know that your salary increase is not that significant. For example, you spend maybe three to four additional years, maybe after you did your research assistant job, you spend three to four extra years doing a PhD. For that time, you probably only earned a stipend about 15000 a year. Then say you decide to do a postdoc. That will only have a slight salary raise of maybe up to 35000 a year. So that's technically not that much of a difference compared to a research assistant role, considering that you have spent so much time and effort in your PhD. So it's just something to keep in mind. But there are of course a number of people who really love science and want to pursue their research and passion for the subject. And you can do that in academia because you have more control of what you want to do. But there's also the pressure of needing to publish papers and secure funding. So it's sort of a weighing out the pros and 
cons. But yeah, this is just to shed a bit of light on salary because I think it is an important consideration for job applications. So it's not to say working in academia or industry is better than the other. It's just sort of your preference and where you see yourself in the future. So yeah, that's it for this video. I hope it was somewhat helpful if you're considering applying for a research assistant position. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below or you can contact me on LinkedIn or Instagram. I also recently created a new TikTok account, so please feel free to follow me there. Um, that's it for this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!